In computing, count min sketch is probabilistic data structure which can be used to count the frequency of the events on the streaming data. It uses multiple hash function to map these frequency onto the metrics. You can argue that you can use hash tables in place of count min sketch to count the frequency much more efficiently. But I'll tell you, this particular algorithm uses very less space, or you can call it as sublinear space, to count the frequencies. But the only disadvantage is sometimes on very rare cases, it overcounts the frequency because of the hash collision. My name is Narain, and in this session, let's learn how count min sketch works and also learn where we can use count min sketch in our systems. So you must be thinking, what is sublinear? Look at this graph to understand more. So the definition of linear, as you know, that as the data increases, the space or the memory consumption also increases in the same way. That is almost like there is a direct relationship between. So that's why the graph is linear. The sublinear, on the other hand, looks something like this. It doesn't consume as much memory like a linear, but it would like less than like half or something like that. So let's go to the actual problem statement. Suppose, think that we have a stream of words. In this case, for the simplicity purpose, I'm taking letters. So we need to count the frequency of these letters, okay? And that too, with sublinear space and constant time. And how do we do that? Along with that, we also need to provide range queries, total count, and also sometimes percentile. So how do we do that? Maybe we can store all of this data in somewhere and then we can run these queries in order of n time and also the space which is taken is order of n, right? But the problem is these streams are kind of infinite stream because they will be keep on coming. Say, for example, in Facebook or Instagram or Amazon.com, these streams, if maybe the order information or any order dispatch information or something like that, they will be keep on coming in. So these streams are kind of infinite stream. So there is no end to these streams. And also we are talking about tons of data. Say for example, this data for a day could be one terabytes or in a month it could be 30 terabytes and it's it will be keep on growing. So when we think of limited space and limited time, so the storage costs, okay? What if we have a storage taken in on Amazon.com, S3, or some other data store? We have to pay for that, right? The problem is because of the limited space and, uh, and also when we run the query, it should go through all of this, you know, terabytes of data or petabytes of data to, you know, calculate the frequency. So we can't afford that much time also. So we have limited time. And also most of the time in streaming platform, these streaming technology will never get a chance to look at the data once again. What happens is, say we have a streaming platform, the data goes in and then the data goes out and you will never know uh, where the data is gone or sometimes we don't even update this data somewhere. So, so this streaming platform should calculate the frequencies or whatever query we want to run, whatever, whatever kind of the data we want to get, as and when the stream is passing through this streaming platform. So we have to have sublinear space consumption because we can't afford to have a linear space. And also we need to keep on calculating or perform all these operations in real time. So the solution for all of this problem is we have to use some kind of algorithm or system which uses sublinear space. So when we use sublinear space, that means that we are kind of compressing the data and saving it in the sublinear space. So when we do compress, you might know or you will know that the data is lost. That means that we will have a little bit of inaccuracy in the data which we provide. So before we jump right into the count min sketch working, let's anyway learn what are the possibilities uh, with which we can do solve this problem. So one way is using hash table. Hash table takes somewhat linear space and the time complexity is order of one, but it's not really order of one because whenever there's a collision, 
it might take more than R of 1. So our goal was to use sublinear, hash table doesn't work with sublinear space, and also the time is not actually constant. So what else? Sampling, we can use sampling. On the data stream, which we are getting, um, what we can do is we can sample in specific duration, or we can do some kind of stochastic sampling or random sampling with which we can get the frequency and then we can sh show the frequency based on that sampling. But the problem is we can't ensure the true randomness. So the output kind of depends on what kind of random algorithm we were going to use it. So that also is not a very useful case or algorithm for our problem statement. Now let's learn how counting sketch works. You heard sketch, right? A sketch is a two-dimensional matrix or array, okay? That looks something like this. This is a two-dimensional matrix representation, which has four rows and about six columns in it. So the number of rows is equal to the number of hash functions we are going to use for this convenient sketch. The number of hash, hash function you want to use depends on yourself. The more accurate results you want, the more number of hash functions you're going to choose. So for this example, for simplicity purpose, I'm going to take only four different hash function. That is H1, H2, H3, and H4, okay? So if you see here, there are four different hash function that is equal to the number of rows which we have in this sketch. And the columns we have is about seven different columns. And the number of columns depends on the maximum number which the hash function gives the output. So that means that we have the sketch, a predefined size of the sketch. And that is the reason why it is called as sublinear because this um, data structure or the sketch size or space, uh, this data structure's size will never change based on the different kinds of input we are getting in this stream. So this is a stream with different letters for the simplicity purpose. This could be numbers or this could be words or anything, okay? For simplicity, I've, I've taken only the, word, the letters. So now we have chosen different kind of hash functions. We have the sketch, okay? Now what we need to do to count the frequency of these letters in the stream, we have to, so consider we are, uh, our stream processor is listening to the stream. So this will encounter the very first word, A. Now what we need to do, we have to pass this A to all these different four hash function and get those values. So I have a table written here for, to, for the easy explanation purpose, okay? So what happens, say for example, we got A, what we had to do is we had to pass A to this hash function A, what do we get? So we might get anything for for the example purpose, I have my own table, which gives output for to explain all the different scenarios, okay? Say we get one. So when we pass A to H2, what do we get? We get six. When we pass to H3, we get three. And when we pass to H4, we get one. So now, what we need to do? We have to update the sketch with those hash values. Say, how do we update? So first, we should have this sketch filled with zeros. Okay, let's do that. I'll fill the zeros. That means that we have no data saved. So this is the fresh sketch. Now we know that when we pass A to H1, we got one. So what do we need to do? Go to first position H1, okay? For A, we got one, that means for H1 row, we have to go to one and then just increment it by one. That means we get one. So next on H2 row, we had to go to sixth position and then increment by one. And then for H3, we go to third position, increment eight by one. And then H4, we go to first position, increment eight by one. So then what we need to do? So we have um, captured the data for A, okay? Now, we got the second element, that is B. So what we had to do, we had to do the same thing. Pass B to all these different hash function, get the output, go to the sketch and increment by one. 
So for B, what are the different outputs we get? For when we pass B to H1, we get 1. So we go to 1. Oh, we have already 1 here. So what we need to do is we just increment by 1. So the value will become 2 in this case. So next, on H2, we have to go to second position. Now increment by 1, 0 to 1. Okay. So for H3, we go to fourth position, increment by one. For uh, H4, we go to sixth position. I'm oh, sorry. H4, we go to sixth position and increment by one. Similarly, when we get K, we had to go to third position for H1, increment by one. I'll change the pointer. And then for H2, we had to go to four, increment by one. For H3, go to one. Sorry. This is, uh, this is fine, this will stay as zero. Okay, for H4, sorry, for H4 it is six. So, okay, just increment by one, so it will become two. Okay, now we get again A. So the pointer moves here. So when we get A, we have to do the same thing. Go to one, increment, so two becomes three, H2, go to 6 and increment, become 2 for, sorry, for H2. For H3, go to 3rd position, increment. For H4, go to 1st position and increment. Okay, nice. Now, what we get? Again, B, sorry, again, A. So, same values, repeat. Increment by 1. So, for H1, it becomes 4. For H2, go to 6. It becomes 3. For H3, go to third position, it also becomes three. For H4, go to first position, and it also becomes three. Now go to B. What do we have? We have K. For K, what are the hash function hash values we get? For K, for H1, it's three position, increment by one. Okay. For H2, go to fourth position, increment by one. For H3, go to K position, sorry, go to first position and increment by one. For H4, go to sixth position and increment by one. That is three. So then we go to S, we got S. So what we need to do, at for H1, we go to sixth position, increment by one. So for H2, we go to second position, increment by one. For H3, we go to fourth position, increment by one. And for H4, we go to first position, increment by one. So we have four here. Okay. Now we have successfully loaded, or we have successfully calculated the frequency of all the stream or the elements in the stream, and we have loaded that data into Sketch. Now we have this data. How do we calculate frequency of any given element? Suppose we want to calculate the frequency of A, okay? What do we do? Now we want to know what is the frequency of A. What we need to do is we have to pass this A to all these different four hash functions again and get the hash output. Since we, we know the number of hash function, so we had to do four times, that means that it's order of one. So it's always constant. All the calculation which we need to do is give A to all of this hash function, get the hash output. So for A, we get the same output, right? So we go to the same position. For H1, it's one. For H1, it's one. We got four. Let's write it over here, okay? We got four. For H2, we got six, right? So let's go to six. We got three. For H3, okay, we got three. Go to third position, get the value. For H4, we got one, go to this, okay. So what output we got is four, three, three, four. Now, as the algorithm name says, we had to count, we had to go to minimum in the sketch, and that's the answer. We did the counting because we loaded all of this data and we have incremented, that's what it is called as count. Now, we need to do the minimum of those counts. Now we have got the data for A, now we have to get the minimum. What is the minimum number in this output? It's three, okay? 
that means the frequency of A is 3. Let's count. A is here 1, 2 and 3. All good? We got 3. Let's run the same case for say K. Okay? Let's do it for K. When we do calculate hash for K, what do we get? Oh, the values are here. For H1 we get 3. So for H1 we get 3. That is 2. For H2 we get 4. Go to 4th position. That is 2. For H3 we get 1. 2. Okay. For H4 we get 6. Go to 6th position. That is 3. So in this case, again, what is the minimum value? That is 2. Sorry. So that is 2. Let's count it here. So how many k's are here? That is 2. So we got 2. So it's actually working. That is what we did. We did the count. Now we're getting the counts and we are calculating minimum from the sketch that is count main sketch. We got the output 2. This always works. When it will fail, why do we call it as probabilistic data structure? Because there could be hash collision. There might be some case where the data for, say, for example, A, A was, um, there's one and uh, six. Say, I'm going to write it over here, mark it over here. So one and then uh, six and then three and then what is that? H4 and then it's one. So four, three, three, four, right? Four, three, three, four. What if one or more element um, got the same hash values and then they all incremented incremented these values. So we could have got about five, four, four, five or something like that, right? So in that case, the value would have increased because of the hash collision. So the more hash function we take, there will be less collision. So the less number of hash function we take, there will be high probability of collision. So it is always advised to take more hash function. So our sketch has more rows in it. So there will be less probability of collision. We get better results. Count min sketch always counts um, the no exact number or more. It will never undercount. It will always do kind of over counting. So we always get the notion that count min sketch will never miss anything, but it might give more count. Okay, and that's how it works. So now that we learned how Kahneman sketch works, now it's time to learn its applications. This algorithm has found its place in many different fields. For example, it has been used in compressed sensing, networking, and also it has been heavily used in NLP and machine learning algorithms. And the major application is in streaming algorithms. Say, for example, Spark, Storm, or Flink, right? So I'm not sure the Spark or Storm is using Kahneman Sketch in their library. I couldn't get that information. But I'm sure that if you want to build your own streaming library, for sure you can use Kahneman Sketch to figure out the frequency of the events or the elements in the stream. So having said that, if you have any doubts, you can always post it in the comment. I'll try to answer them. As a task, I would request you guys uh, to implement the Kahneman sketch in your favorite programming language and post it to me, to my email ID, or post it on the comment. I'm going to update the code links in my description of this video, and that way the viewers can uh, find it handy or they can refer to the code base. Thank you. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and also tell your friends to subscribe to this channel. There are tons of super cool videos or about different algorithms or system designs I'm going to post, keep posting every week. And also I'm always open for suggestions. Please do post me on suggestions about the videos or how I can improve myself while explaining this stuff. Or if you have any request for me to make any videos, please do post. Thank you.